All right, so our next speaker is uh, Yingbo Ma, uh, who I'm sure many of you uh, are familiar with his work if you use cyanide tooling, because he's worked on almost all of it, it seems like. Um, so Yingbo, please tell us about the internals of modeling toolkit. Thank you for the intro introduction. Uh, so I'm Yingbo, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the internals of modeling toolkit today. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm a research engineer at Jura Computing working on modeling and numerics. Um, and most of this work was done when I was a undergraduate at UMBC. Um, and I had a part-time position while I was in the university. So speaking of modeling, um, the most common formulation is ordinary differential equations, which uh, the derivative of the state is simply equal to uh, a possibly nonlinear relation between uh, the state parameters and time. But there are several drawbacks uh, of ODEs in the context of engineering. So for instance, if we want to simulate circuits, um, we want to express Kirchhoff, uh, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law, uh, but then those are not differential equations. And another limitation, for instance, is that in the setting of multi-body dynamics, uh, when we have constraints on the length of the component, um, we cannot express that in uh, ordinary differential equations easily. So really, in the engineering setting, we want to use ordinary differential equations with explicit constraints. So in other words, differential, differential algebraic equations, uh, which is simply a possibly nonlinear relation between uh, the derivatives states parameters and time. For instance, the pendulum equations from before are precisely in this form. Uh, and today we are going to use the RC circuit as a model example to show the capability of modeling toolkits and the internals of it. Uh, one might argue that uh, to simulate an RC circuit is simply a single ordinary differential equation. So uh, why do we have to do all these extra steps to model the simple RC circuit. Uh, the point here is that we want to model it in a composable way where we model each physical component individually and connect them later um, as needed and simplify the, uh, the connected system by a computer instead of by hand. Um, so in here, we are going to build a model for the resistor, the capacitor, and uh, the voltage source. And each simple circuit component is characterized by uh, the current and the voltage. So in here, we first define a connector component, uh, a pin model, where it only has the voltage and the, the current. Uh, the current is annotated as a flow variable, meaning that in each junction, the summation of all the voltage, uh, of all the current uh, is zero. And in each junction, all the voltages are equal. So the contact, uh, and then we need to define a ground. Uh, so the concept of a ground is often skipped uh, in introductory physics class where, um, but then it's kind of important in the simulation setting because all the voltage are only defined to be uh, relative. Uh, so if we have a particular solution, then any constant difference in the voltage is also a solution. So to make sure that we have a unique solution, we want to set a component uh, voltage to zero, and that is the ground. Uh, to simplify the modeling process a bit more, we can uh, use the idea of object-oriented programming, where we abstract away intrinsic physical constraints of a whole class of physical components, and then extend the space model uh, by specific equations later. Um, so a abstraction for all the simple um, circuit models with two terminals are simply that uh, the voltage drop of this component is equal to the voltage difference between the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Um, and the current is conserved. So the positive terminal's current plus the negative terminal's, con uh, terminal's current uh, equals to zero. And the voltage of this whole component is simply the positive terminal's uh, voltage. So this is kind of like the boundary conditions of PDEs, where, uh, where those are the physical constraints. And to fill in the details, uh, we need to 
expand this um, phase model. So for instance, the resistor to uh, define a resistor is simply a simple uh, circuit uh, component with two terminals. And it has the internal equation that uh, the voltage drop is equal to the current multiplied by its uh, resistance. And the capacitor is a uh, circuit component with two terminals where the derivative of the voltage is equal to uh, the current divided by its capacitance. So this is kind of like the interior conditions of uh, PDEs. Um, to instantiate a, the RC circuit, we simply first instantiate all the components, the resistors, capacitors, constant voltage, and the ground, uh, and then simply connect them uh, in a loop. Uh, after instantiating it, we notice that there are only 17 equations uh, and 20 states. To have a balanced model, we want to have the same number of equations as the number of states. Uh, that is because the connect statement might generate more than one equation. So after running the expand connections uh, function, we got a balanced model where we have 20 equations and 20 states. Uh, as we have saw before that um, the RC circuit is characterized by single uh, ordinary differential equation. And now we have 20, 20 equations. Uh, it seems to be extremely costly numerically than what it should be. Uh, this is where the optimization of modeling toolkit comes in. Uh, and our first observation is that all the algebraic equations are linear and uh, con with constant coefficients. Uh, and most of, most of them are homogeneous. So if we have a algorithm that can be run on a uh, linear subsystem with integer coefficients and it's fast and uh, and always truncation error, that would be great. And the solution is to use the Brias algorithm. The Brias algorithm exploits the fact that uh, the determinant of integer value matrices is also integer. And he proved that uh, this algorithm is always fraction-free. And because it's fraction-free, we don't have to use costly rational arithmetic. And uh, because it's specialized for integers, we don't get any truncation error. So this is ideal for uh, modeling toolkit. So in the implementation of alias elimination inside the modeling toolkit, we first collect all the linear homogeneous equations, and then we apply the Brias algorithm to re remove the redundant equations and aliases. Uh, removing redundant equations is important because sometimes uh, doing component-based modeling, we can generate uh, degenerate equations where they are they are basically saying the same thing but um, uh, which may which will make the uh, Jacobian of the model singular so we definitely want to remove all the redundant equations uh, and aliases is, is um, just simply in the form of a equals to b or b equals to uh, minus b equals to a uh, and then those are the lines where those are implemented. So after running the alias elimination, we got seven equations instead of 20 equations. Uh, to optimize this system all the way down to a single ordinary differential equation, uh, we need another process called tearing. So consider this uh, nonlinear system of equations. Uh, if we suppose we already know the variable u5, uh, then we can solve for u1 from variable u5. And then we can solve for u2 from the variable u1 that we got from u5. And then so get the variable u3 from u1 and u2, and get the variable u4 from u2 and u3. And then notice that we get back uh, variable u5 from uh, variable u4 and u1. And then we notice that we assume variable u5 is known, and then we get back a variable u5. So, Basically, we can substitute uh, the first four equations into the last equation. Uh, and we reduce the system of five uh, nonlinear equations into just the one single nonlinear equation. Uh, this makes uh, a single nonlinear equation is much easier for numerical solvers to solve because we, if, if we want to run Newton iteration, 
we evaluate the Jacobian matrix and do the IO factorization. If we only have a scalar, then we only have a scalar division instead of computing the IO factorization of a five by five matrix. Um, so we want to let uh, write an algorithm that does this automatically, and the MTK is in, uh, is implemented in terms of graphs. So um, first, we get a bipartite graph from the connectivity of the equations and unknowns, and then we run a matching algorithm to assign each equation with an unknown, uh, and then we contract away all the equation nodes in this bipartite graph to get a graph of all the unknowns. So after this stage, we kind of get a uh, dependency relations of all the unknowns. But in in uh, normally a dependency graph is uh, a acyclic uh, graph. But in here we might have cycles because instead of assignments we have nonlinear uh, equations. Uh, so the tearing is simply re the the tearing uh, process is simply to remove all the acyclic subgraphs. So all the part uh, that we can solve by simply evaluating some kind of function, and it's Im implemented in here. Uh, the implementation in modern toolkit is greedy and is known to be non-optimal, but it runs in polynomial time. Uh, there is a optimal algorithm proposed by um, by half, uh, by half. Uh, although that algorithm is um, NP-hard, so it takes much longer to run that. Maybe we can implement that in the future as an improvement. But uh, the current greedy, uh, the greedy approach works pretty well in practice. Uh, so putting everything together, just calling the structural simplify on the RC model we get uh, one single ODE as expected. That is uh, the voltage source minus the voltage of the capacitor divided by the capacitance uh, multiplied by the uh, resistance. Uh, still, uh, listeners might notice that uh, in here we are calling full equations instead of just calling equations before. Uh, that is because uh, we don't compute the substitution after tearing uh, immediately, like we have done uh, in here. Because in here, you can notice that we are uh, duplicating a lot of efforts. Uh, so we are evaluating uh, F1 of U, uh, F2 of F1 of U5 twice, right? For instance. So to get efficient lowering into Julia code, we cannot substitute immediately, but uh, compute the, the lowering from. Uh, all the observed equations. And then uh, instead of doing substitution, we uh, just do assignments. So this is like um, common substitution elimination uh, of this system. And I want to thank all my collaborators, uh, in particular, Shashi from MIT, Chris uh, Kino Varal from Drill Computing, and Chris Lofman from Murrow and people from the Modelica community for discussing the algorithms, in particular Hilding and Martin. And since the work, most of the work was done when I was an undergrad at uh, UMBC, I want to thank my undergraduate advisor, Dr. Susidik, for his accommodation. Yeah. So I'm ready for questions. Uh, very nice talk. Um, so we did get a, a, a question. Um, looks like from YouTube saying, this approach looks a lot like uh, Modelica or Modia. Have you considered, uh, or are you cooperating or trying to work with them in any way? Yes, <laughs> that is from the acknowledgement. <laughs> but uh, maybe you could say a little more about what you're doing with them. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we have been talking about uh, better handling uh, array variables inside um, a causal modeling settings. For instance, if we want to model PD discretization inside um, modern toolkit. Currently, we are uh, expanding um, the array variable in terms of scalar variables. So imagine if you have a 1,000 by 1,000 PD discretization. That's going to be horrendous, right? Um, 
because everything is gonna look like this. Um, uh, so uh, we are talking about a better algorithm to handle uh, PDs and uh, with boundary conditions in particular, because for instance, if you have a directly boundary condition after running tearing, we are basically removing the directly boundary condition, right? And then we are only simulating the interior. Uh, so we are trying to come up with an algorithm that uh, reduces away the directly uh, boundary condition, but keep uh, retain the array structure instead of scalarizing everything. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Um, all right, we have a, a question from Discord asking about uh, where are things at with regards to defining optimal control problems, especially for closed loop control. Uh, yeah, that is currently being worked on uh, at Julia Computing. Although I don't know much about controls, uh, Frederick is probably going to tell, can can tell you more about uh -huh. uh, the plan of controls inside okay. the model toolkit. So I had a question. So I, I see you know you did a lot of uh, updating and refactoring and expansion of the structural simplify kind of code, and you mentioned some components of that today with the aliasing and the tearing. So are you trying to make that more general? Or are you trying to make it work uh, easier to plug into? Because right now it's kind of very internalized, right, to modeling toolkit. Like, it, is there plans for growing that or expanding that in any specific ways beyond the array stuff you just mentioned, I guess? Right, yeah. Um, so there are some current, there, currently there are some limitations that makes, uh, for instance, the alias elimination uh, not very easy to use, right? It only works for linear homogeneous equations. So if you have like minus one in the equation, then it doesn't work, right? Um, so so there, there are some opportunities to generalize uh, alias elimination and tearing, uh, but it's not a top priority right now. So if you have some ideas on how this can be used in uh, so I like want some kind of alias elimination thing that we can use in Catalyst to reduce given what we consider con algebraic constraints, I get linear algebraic constraints. Right. Yeah. Or before, before translating to ODEs or such. So. Yeah, I think we can do that. Um, it's pretty generic if you look at the code. Um, so the refactoring was done by Kino. It's not <laughs> like. Uh, a bad hoc thing that we had before. Um, so in here, we are simply getting, um, uh, yeah, in here we compute uh, the subsystem that is linear and uh, homogeneous. Uh, and then we just run the alias eliminate graph. And this has nothing to do with uh, DAs in particular, right? So this can be done in general. So as long as I think if, you, if we implement uh, collecting the sub, systems, uh, the linear subsystems, then we are good to go. OK. Then I guess we need some kind of re graph representation among the reactions to figure out how to reduce variables in there. So. Right. Yeah. And then uh, so IEG in here is, uh, is a vector of aliases. And MIME in here is just a reduced matrix ah, okay. in, in actual form. Cool. So and then you would write some symbolic code that uh, converts this AG into uh, incorporating the alias into the actual model. So we do some substitutions in here uh, and updating the system. Cool. I, I'll have to I'll have to bug you about this more offline. So you got a couple more questions. And since we have a break, I think we could at least do one or one more. Um, so one was asking about, um, is there the possibility to add thermal noise to your RC circuits using uh, to get SDEs? Right. Uh, I think that can be done in principle, but I'm not sure it's implemented correctly uh, with SDEs. Okay. Yeah. All right. 